such an amazing, amazing opportunity to open the new year with words of, of chizuk, inspiring words of truth. From the bottom of my heart, I promise to you, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you only the truth. I'm going to tell you important things that will inspire you. And I didn't lie, you're going to be inspired, I promise you. I'm going to tell you something very important. After thousands of years of exile, many of us lost family members, we lost houses, we lost properties, we lost books, we lost memories, we lost information. We also lost something that is much closer to every single one of us than all of those things that I mentioned. We lost ourselves. We lost our inner connection to who that we are. And that is the first thing that we need to find and to bring back before we're going out to search after the rest of the things that are so important for us to achieve in life. The foundation of our building, first of all, is to be who that we are. Means to be honest with who that you are. You are who that you are no matter what you're gonna do. Even if you're gonna try to run away from who that you are for the rest of your life, in the first moment in the world to come, you're gonna come back to yourself. Faster than a speeding bullet, you're going to come back to who that you are. You're going to realize that you were wrong, that you went in the wrong direction, that you missed the real intention and purpose of your life. And we don't want to get to that embarrassing moment. We want to be people of truth and to be able to stand in front of King of all kings and to tell him, Yes, it's me. What's your name? I remember. My name is Dror Moshe, yes I remember, from the family Kasuto, yes my mother name Emanuela, my father Avraham, yes I remember. How a person can forget his name? We have that halakha that we need to mention a verse that holds the first letters and last letters of our name in every Shemona Yisra, in every prayer. We need to mention that verse, why? That in Judgment Day, in the world to come, we're not going to forget who that we are. I asked that question so many times before. Do you think that Avraham Avinu was saying a verse? Do you think that Yitzchak Avinu, Sarai Menu, Rivka, Rachel, Leah, Yaakov, one of those... You think that they mentioned the verse? I don't know, I wasn't there, I don't remember, I don't know. But do you think that Abraham Avinu, or let's say the Baba Sali, or Rabbi Nachman of Westerv, or the, the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, or, or the, the, the Lebuv Lubavitcher Rebbe, were they needed that verse, to mention that verse, to refresh their memory in the world to come? I'm sure in 100% that all of those righteous people knew exactly who they were in the world to come when they were standing in front of the king. Why? Because they never moved from who that they were already in this world. So why are they going to forget who that they are in the world to come? But if when someone comes to you and asks you, How are you? Who are you? And now you're pretending. And you're saying, Ah, oh, I'm great. And you're so low. So you're not who that you are. So it's going to be very easy to forget who that you are. Who are you? I'm doctor whatever. I'm professor, whatever. I'm a Bahu Yeshiva. Okay. Those are stories that you're telling yourself, you're telling your, 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 your Shadchan, you're telling your parents. I don't know who you're trying to sell those stories. I'm a doctor. You're sick in your mind. Say the truth. Sound sick. Sound crazy. I don't know who I am. I lost my, 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 my mind long, long years ago. 
I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to. I'm dragging myself from the ceilings, from the floor, from the tiles. I'm, I'm looking for myself. Who are you? Do you know who you are? I'm asking, do you know who you are? I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Or that you feel some pain in your stomach and you're losing your mind? Okay, so say I'm losing my mind because I smell some food. Don't say I'm hungry. Do you know that you're hungry? Have you ever tasted hunger that you know for sure that you're hungry? Do you know what it means to be hungry? After three days without eating, without drinking, okay, now I can hear your opinion about hunger. I promise I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to learn from you. But today, <laughs> that you just missed your lunch, <laughs> that's hunger. That's not hunger. You were never hungry in your life. That's the truth. You don't know what's hunger. No, I'm angry. You're angry. Do you know what's anger? Have you investigated the concept anger that you will know what anger is all about? Do you know I'm happy? Are you happy? Do you know what happiness is? And I'm asking you, do you know who you are? And I'm sure that you cannot answer so fast. You can mention your name, you can mention your hobbies, you can mention the, 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 the purpose that you heard from so many powerful, inspiring speakers and rabbis, people said, Oh yeah, I'm serving Hashem. What? You're serving? <laughs> are you serving Hashem? I want to know. How you do that? Who are you serving? Hashem. Who is Hashem? Tell me who is Hashem. Who are you serving? Can you answer who Hashem is? So how can you serve someone you don't know? Do you know Hashem? All of those questions are not hard questions. Those are, those are just questions that are pushing us to focus on the real purpose of our life. To put your mind into a purpose. Now you feel that you're sad. Okay, now you need to go out from that sadness. So first of all, an investigation is required to understand what really goes on in your spirit, in your body. Who are you? Why are you so sad? Why is it upsetting you? Why it makes you so nervous? Why you lost your mind? Why you decided to explode? Why? What you're afraid of? What are we missing that makes us be now sad, now hungry, now depressed, now terrified, now so happy and excited, and losing that happiness after three minutes or after one sentence that we just heard? Oh, that's it. You're not happy anymore. Why? Why you lost your happiness? Maybe it wasn't your happiness. Maybe you were just daydreaming that you're happy. Those questions are not confusing us. Those questions are just bringing us to realize that we need to connect ourselves to who that we are with truth. With truth. A student of mine asked me a question. I read in that inspiring book an advice that tells you that you need to do this and that and you must. Okay, I hear you. I won't. I will not going to contradict that book. I'm not going to say anything against that book. I promise you. Why? Because that author, that righteous man that wrote that book had his intention while writing that book. He came out of somewhere. He wanted to express something. But to tell you now that that will be the perfect book for you to guide you and to bring you to your true self, to find the Creator, to find your inner connection to the purpose, the meaning of life, I can tell you that that will be your book. That that will be the perfect recipe for your true happiness and success. I don't know that. So I cannot guide you to take the advice from that book. So what you're going to do, you need to say the truth. You need to be honest with yourself and to check, okay, now I read that paragraph, I read that chapter, I read that book. What happened to me corresponding to that piece of information that went into my mind, into my heart? Now you came to my class, you heard my class, you're listening to my class. You don't need to listen to me. You don't need, don't need to follow me and my advice. You need to see what happens inside of your own heart while I'm talking on certain subjects, on certain issues. And you need to handpick to choose the pieces of information that will give you the power to deal with your own problems, with your issues. I don't know what's going on in your houses, in your life. I don't know what you need, what you need. I can just offer for you. 
a wonderful umbrella of opportunities. I can open my wings and to open for you the gates of the wisdom that God gave me. And now I'm going to share. And you should take what that is required for the purpose of your life. One needs advice for peace in his house. One needs advice to see how to bring down bounty for his family, to send his children to school, to pay their tuition. Another one needs to learn and to understand about himself what should be the direction. Now he wants to think about the future. It's time to restart. Okay, great. So you need to find out who you really are and to be connected to who that you are. And to be honest with yourself, if you have a problem, you need to deal with that problem and put everything else aside. It's not important. Even if there is another rabbi that is teaching and preaching and lecturing and, 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 and throwing thousands of, of classes on that topic, but if now in your life it's not really the main issue, you need to be strong enough to believe in yourself and to try to work on the real problems that you have in your life and to fix them first. And not to be rejected and not to fall to sadness because you are not able to function and to run in the same speed of those lectures of that kind of chassidut or, or certain way of serving Hashem in Barach and you're not able to fulfill your obligation in that track. Maybe it's not your track. Maybe it's not your path. And it doesn't mean that you contradict it. It doesn't mean that you disagree. Now people are waking up every morning and going to work. Great, it's amazing. Everyone are doing that. Everyone are waking up. Everyone have their offices, they have their jobs, their positions. Everyone are making money. Great. Now you woke up in a certain day and all of your house is wet. The sewer went up. Now all the house is flooded. Can you go to work? No, you can't. You have to deal with the problem that you have now in your house. And that's the only main issue that you need to deal with. Now you have a child that is suffering. Now you have an issue with your relationship with your, with your soulmate. Okay, something needs to be done. But I wasn't praying Mincha. But I was not learning my Dafayomi. But I was not doing my Shaid Bodedut. Okay, great, I hear you. I understand you. But if you have a domestic problem, if you have an issue that needs to be fixed right now, you need to believe in yourself that it's going to be perfectly okay. Also in the eyes of heaven, also from the point of view of the Creator that is looking at your life, to understand that it's okay for Him also, that you're going to be who that you are, and that you're going to deal with the problems that you have in your life. And it's okay. But for that you need to believe in yourself. You must believe in yourself. You must find your true self if you want to believe in yourself. How are you going to believe in yourself if you don't know who you are? So if you have a certain nature, you need to understand it. You need to know that that's who that you are. And then you need to flow with that nature and to understand why in the world the Creator made you to be who that you are. That it's so hard for you to wake up in the mornings. That you always need to ask for a second dish while you're eating. You need to know why. Not only to criticize yourself and to break yourself and to hate yourself and to punish yourself and, 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 and to destroy yourself because of having those lackings. Maybe in the eyes of the Creator, that we believe that He is a perfect Creator. And He created you in a certain shape with a certain nature. Maybe He had a purpose while creating you like that. Maybe there is a certain power, maybe there is a certain quality, even in your defaults, even in your weaknesses. For an example, there can be a situation that you, and only because that you're weak in a certain way, gonna have a certain hobby that is negative, that you don't like, and you are wrapped after that thing. You're falling again and again after that hobby, after that desire, and you're failing. In your eyes, the way that you judge yourself for you, it's a failure. And you keep on failing and falling and falling. But one day, the amazing Creator will make a combination. 
He will take you and will let you meet a person that have the same problem or even worse than yours. And you will open your heart and share your pain. And He will listen to you and will learn from you. And you will save His life. Or at least you're going to give Him enough power to deal with a certain challenge that He won't be able to deal with without your wisdom, without your life experience. So God chose you to be His messenger, to provide that wisdom to one of His children and to save His life. Or really to give Him a hand and a support and to build that person that is so precious and amazing and important in the eyes of the Creator. But for that, He had to qualify you. And His way to qualify you was to kick you to the swamps of darkness, to the lowest and darkest places in the universe, and to let you swallow some of that filth for a certain time in your life. And there, in that place, you bought your life experience. And He also gave you the strength to climb up from that swamp and to become who that you are today, a person that is dealing with his weaknesses, a strong person that is trying, that is not giving up, that is restarting over and over, and that read few books in his life, and got hope, and heard that there is no despair, and now you, with that strength, are going to go and going to illuminate the world with the light of faith with the light of truth, of honesty, of your life experience. So instead of chasing yourself and blaming yourself, just give the credit to King of all kings to understand that he was the one that sent Yaakov, our father, to Egypt, and then he brought him back with all of his children, with all of his treasures. But first of all, he sent him to Egypt. So instead of blaming yourself that you're now stuck in Egypt, remind yourself that there is a Creator. There is a Creator and He is with you in Egypt. 100% with you in Egypt. Surrounding you, wrapping you, hugging you, supporting you, building you, and also hurting you. And also shaking your stability. And also making you doubt yourself and doubt the Torah and doubt the rabbis and doubt the wisdom and doubt faith and doubt the reality of the world to come. And He is hiding His face, face from you with a purpose. And what's that purpose? You should find that purpose. I cannot tell you what's your purpose. I can tell you what I found out about myself. That I can share. And you can learn from me not how to become like me. You should learn from me how to become yourself. Because that's the mission of your life, to be who that you really are. And the evil inclination, that damn snake, what that he did, no one ever did before. He took the worst thing of them all. He took something so ludicrous, something so crazy. He found the idea of the most impossible thing in the world and he planted it inside the hearts and the minds of all human beings. He let everyone feel wrong with who that they are and that they will always follow their eyes to see how to imitate and how to become like other people. And it's the only thing in the world that is impossible for you to do. To become someone else. You cannot do that. No matter how inspiring that person will be, that you will look up to, you will never going to be him. Even with plastic surgeries, even with a thousands of years in his Beit Midrash, you won't become him. You will never be him. Even if you're going to always eat his leftovers, always going to wear what that he were, wore, Always going to read from his books, you're not going to become him. You will never going to become him. It won't help you. I ate Shiraim. <laughs> I don't know how much, how many pounds of Shiraim I ate. I didn't become that person that ate that first dish. Him. I, I didn't become him. I'm sorry. Maybe it helped me in a way. I don't know. To say the truth, I don't feel that it helped me. I don't know. Maybe it was tasty. Also, not so much. I, okay, food. 
No. <laughs> you need to be who that you are. The fact that there are thousands of people that will follow someone and will try to imitate him and to become like him and to eat from his leftovers, it doesn't mean that that's your real point while trying serving Hashem. I'm not saying that they are wrong. They might be right, but you need to ask yourself, is it my path? Should I also go and try to push to take some kegel from some amazing torch of flaming holy fire? Is it really going to change my life? Maybe, maybe I'm already one hour and a half late and my wife she is so depressed in the house and I need to think about her. What do you think that Hashem will say? For me the answer is clear. But I had to fall on my face so many times to wake up and to find that truth for me. To find the truth of Hashem. Hashem is saying to us through the Torah, by in the hands of the righteous people, He sent that message to all of us that the Creator could not find a bigger, better vessel to contain the blessing except of peace. Okay, great. Lo Kadosh Baruch Hu Kli Machzik Baruchah Ela Shalom. The peace. What does it mean, peace? To have peace with your wife, with your soulmate, with your family members, with your friends. Peace. What does it mean? Peace. Peace doesn't mean quiet. Peace means friendship, honesty, sharing information, chatting and talking, living your life with friendship, with joy, with satisfaction, with a smile on your face. Not faking peace. Not peace with an enemy. Peace with your best friend. That the blessing will come to your house. That Hashem will walk between you. That the Shekhinah will be uh, uh, one of your, your family members. That Hashem will choose your house 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That Hashem will say, wow, that's the most pleasant place in the universe. I want to hang out with them. That's peace. That's Shalom. The name of Hashem is Shalom. It's one of his names. Now you want to have Shalom Bait. You need to make your house the most pleasant place in the world. Okay, what's a pleasant place? Place that people are happy. It's a pleasant place. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be well designed. It just needs to have a nice atmosphere. The people are able to express themselves and to talk and also to be quiet when they feel like being quiet. You need to make sure that your family lives in a house like that. So I'm asking you, by pushing your way to take that kugel, you think that you're going to have peace in your house? Maybe a piece of kugel. <laughs> Hopefully a piece of kugel. But you're going to get your piece of, you know what, when you're going to come back home. And only to wake you up, to show you that you misinterpret the real intention of the Torah. The real voice of the righteous people. And even if rabbis in this generation are misinterpreting the real intention of the Creator, the real will of the Creator, it doesn't mean that you need to follow their mistake. You need to follow Hashem. After 120 years they're going to judge you on who that you were in life. Who you really were. What was your real intention in life? What was your real meaning? What was your real will? Who were you? When they were screaming at you, when they were telling you, when they were offering you, when they were rebuking you, who were you? Who are you? Who are you in time of crisis? Who are you in time of pain? Who are you in time of joy? When you're succeeding, what are the thoughts that are crossing your mind? When you're failing, what are the thoughts that are crossing your mind? Okay, and now the question is, and what are you doing with those thoughts? When you realize that you're arrogant, or when you realize that you were so humble, what are you doing with those thoughts? Are you staying humble after realizing that you were humble? Are you staying arrogant after realizing that you were arrogant? Or that you're doing tshuva? Or that you're humbling yourself? Because if there, even, even after a failure, if you did tshuva and you came back to Hashem, you reach such a high level that that can be the purpose of why Hashem Barach failed you in the first place. Hashem doesn't want you to suffer. Hashem doesn't want you to fail. Hashem wants to give you a gift 
that is from the world of beyond, from the world to come, an eternal gift that you will be able to spend eternity with Him. What does it mean? To know Him first. To know who that He is. So who is He? When someone is calling you names, when someone is shaming you, insulting you, rebuking you, when someone is uncovering your weaknesses, when someone is putting the flashlights on your wounds, on the most sensitive places, who is that person for you? Is he an enemy? Or that he's your best friend that helps you to recognize the points that you need to fix? We need to love the rebuke. Because God rebukes the one that He loves. The rebukes, the shames, the insultings, the pains, the failures that we are experiencing in our life, they have a purpose. They've been sent to us from heaven, from the loving kindness of the Creator, that He wants to help us to deal with the things that are so important and required for our purpose to accomplish to complete, to achieve perfection, to become one with Him. For that we need to fix. What you need to fix? Everyone will say, oh, so many things. Okay, you know what? So many things. Let's start. Let's start. You want to do it? Let's do it. First step. Baby steps. If you will try to make your baby run, he will fall on his face, he won't make it. Now if you're in the level of a baby and you're only crawling, that's the maximum speed that you can achieve. And once in a few minutes you need to sit and to relax and to breathe and to bring back your breath again to yourself and to reset your mind and to breathe again. So that's your level, that's your ability. God will not going to judge you on not being able to do something that you're not able to do. He expects from you to do only what that is in your power. You should do only what that you find that is in your power to do. But if you found something that needs, that required your attention, so do that. If your wife, she's screaming, don't judge her. Oh, she's screaming. Listen, there is a reason for why that she's screaming. Yes, you're right. She is a nervous person. Yes, you're right. But there is also a reason for why she's nervous. So maybe if you will pay attention to that. Hey, but I'm also nervous. Hey, but I also got my reasons. Oh, so you want us to listen to you? So why won't you be a role model and listen to us? Listen to me. I'll listen to you. If now I have something to say, I promise to you that if you're going to listen to me, and now that's a clear evidence, I am asking you to listen to me because I have something to say. So please, wait a little bit more. In the end, I'm going to listen to you too. But before I'm going to finish my speech, I'm not able to listen to you. If not, I'm going to say, I have a question. I'm going to tell you, wait one second. One minute. One hour. One hour and a half. Until I'll finish. When you're going to give him or her the opportunity to express herself, to express himself, when he's going to finish saying whatever he has to say, he will listen to you. And not only that he's going to listen to you, he will have the vessels to contain all of your words and to listen to you and to hear you fully and to understand you because He gonna care about you because He felt that you cared about Him and He will have the gratitude for your patience and for your love and for your honor and your respect for honoring Him and listening to Him and wanting to help Him and letting Him complete His speech. And when you're going to do that, you're going to open not only for Him, also for yourself. That opportunity that someone else will listen to you. By being a good friend, you will have a good friend. By being an honest person, you will find yourself surrounded with honest people. 
in the way that you gonna walk that the way that heaven will walk in front of you that you're gonna measure that's how they're gonna measure for you so first of all a person needs to qualify himself needs to work on himself as much as he can to become a better person and I'm telling you to become a better person it doesn't mean to change it's to become your true self you want to be nice you want to love you want to care you want to have all the patience in the world true you don't have it now true now many things are bothering you but who that you really are inside is a holy soul is a holy angel who that you are is a godly soul is part of heaven you are the way that the Creator decided to reveal his own light his own soul Nishmat Eloka in his world who are you you're a beam of light from the light of the Creator you are a soul from heaven that with your soul the Creator was consulting before the creation and he was asking your opinion and he sent you to a mission after that you accepted that mission on yourself and the Orachaim HaKadosh, the huge, holy, huge, holy, righteous man, the Orachaim HaKadosh said that we are in the level of a friend, of a brother to the Creator that He put us in such amazing levels because He knows our qualities. Because He knows exactly where we've been carved from. From the throne of honor. From the most holiest place in heaven. That even the holiest angels haven't been carved from that place. We came from the highest place in heaven. From the place that the Creator Himself found for His honor. The place that He's sitting. From that place we came out to the world from. So who are we? We are godliness itself. We are Hashem's face in the world. We are Hashem's opinion in the world. We are Hashem's wisdom in the world. We are Hashem's faith in the world but only if you're gonna believe in yourself you will be able to express the wisdom that God planted inside of you if you will be shy if you're always gonna be terrorized by people you will never be able to express yourself who that God made you to be you don't need to be handsome you don't need to be a genius you don't need to be talented you don't need to be I don't know what qualified you just need to be who that he made you because he knows the best and he knew and he thought and he made you to be exactly who that you are in your height in your weight with your colors with your shape with your qualities with your weaknesses with your lackings, with all the defaults that you can find in yourself. That's the way that He decided out of His wisdom, out of His greatness, out of His kindness to design you and to send you on a mission. What's the mission? Oh, you forgot. Great. Now it's the time to remember. Now it's the time to make that investigation and to find out who am I? Okay, Judaism, great. Okay, Hasidut, great. Okay, whatever, great. Family, community, synagogues, neighborhoods, cities, towns, lands, whatever, world, human race, great, whatever. Who are you inside of all of that huge picture? Who are you, the individual? Who am I? That's the question. Who am I? You need to ask yourself, who in the world am I? What's my mission? Okay, I'm a mother. No, that's not who that I am. That's my job. That's my occupation. That's what I'm doing on a daily basis. And I can't run away from it. Great. I'm also a mother. But who am I as a mother? I'm learning Torah. I'm serving Hashem. I'm religious. I'm going to shul. I'm going to classes. I'm putting tefillin. Are you putting tefillin? 
When did you put tefillin last time that you were putting tefillin? Were you there while putting tefillin? I want to find my connection while I'm putting tefillin. Someone once asked me, what's your intention when you're making kiddush on the cup? I said to make a kiddush on the cup. You need to say Kiddush on the cup, right? You're obligated to say Kiddush on the cup. Great, Friday night, there is a cup. You need to say Kiddush. Now, what's your intention? Do I need to aim to the heights? Do I need to bring down combinations and, and of names, of holy names? If that's the way that I'm thinking, if all of that wisdom is installed in my mind, and the way that I see the world is through those amazing combinations of holy names, Great, that will be my intention while I'm making Kiddush on the cup. But when my thoughts always are always only to try to serve Hashem, to try to remember Hashem, to try to be a good example for my children, so when I'm going to do those things, serving Hashem, I'm going to have those intentions while serving Hashem. I'm going to try to be a good father while making a Kiddush on the cup. I'm going to try to be a good example for my children. How? By making combinations in my mind and forgetting whoever is around me. It's not me. Maybe it's your level, maybe it's his level, maybe it's written in some amazing books that that was the level of those holy, amazing, inspiring people that, 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 that illuminate the world with the light of Torah. Great! I'm so happy for them. But I can lose my family if I'm going to follow those advice. I can lose my children if I'm going to follow those letters. I'm going to try to find them somewhere in heaven. I know that if my mind is not in the table with the children talking, not talking, I'm going to lose the Kiddush. I can make the Kiddush and one of the children is still in the kitchen. So what's the worth? What's the use? There's no use. I need to be honest with myself and to find my real level and to be aware to my true self. And then from that point of honesty, I can serve Hashem with truth. Now I can serve Hashem. Because without that honesty, I wasn't there. I was daydreaming. I was hoping, I was thinking, I was planning, I was drowned in my imagination. I wasn't there. I wasn't connected to reality. And reality doesn't mean that you're now not going to be spiritual. Wake up. You were not spiritual. You were hallucinating. You were imagining yourself. You were just dreaming. That is not spirituality. Spirituality it starts with reality. We're not talking about visions that are coming after using drugs or whatever things that makes a person hallucinate, like not eating, not taking a shower. A person can start thinking that he's an angel. Only because not taking showers, I'm telling you, people that are not taking showers are losing their minds. Mikveh doesn't help. Shower, you need to wash yourself with soap and shampoo. If you don't do that, I promise you, you're going to lose your mind. Even if you're going to learn seven hours Gemara every day, three hours Shulchan Aruch every day, going to dip in the Mikveh 613 dips every day in the mikveh, you're going to wake up chatzot, you're going to say Birkot HaShachar in public, not going to take a shower with soap and shampoo, lose your mind. I promise you, I'm sorry. I saw those, those situations. I know that for a fact. You can lose your mind if you're not washing yourself, cutting your fingernails, fixing your face, washing your clothing, buying nice shoes, walking, saying Shalom Aleichem to people, you're going to lose your mind. You're going to think to yourself that you're an angel, but actually you're a bum. You're nothing. You're dreaming. You think that you're something. You're telling, you're making up stories to yourself. Oh yeah, I'm achieving this, I'm achieving that. I had a vision, I had a dream, you know. Who said so? You're crazy. Your place is in a nut house. You're crazy. You're sick in your mind. And you think that you're something because you make up a story to yourself. You're doing it alone in your mind to yourself, telling yourself how great you are. And everyone else are disappointed from you and they're saying it. It's not that they're not saying and it's people that loves you. And it's people that cares about you. And you can't hear them. Why? Because you're too busy and being selfish. 
So buy an iPhone and make some nice selfies and, 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 and finish your crazy story with that. And be honest and deal with your weaknesses and work on yourself, on your character, on your midot, on your attributes, to be nice. Rabbi Yochanan was saying Shalom Aleichem to every person, even to a non-Jew in the market. Means that even though that he came from a very firm community, that he was hanging out only with the most righteous people in that generation, and his mind was all into the Torah, when he met a person that his culture was radical to the other side, that he didn't have no understanding about the importance of Torah and keeping mitzvot, and he was just walking in the market to buy meat for his feasts. Rabbi Yochanan would find it as a good enough reason to tell him Shalom Aleichem, to say, hey, how are you? How do you feel? God bless you. Rabbi Yochanan, he was not wasting his time. He just realized what was the real purpose of life. What life was really all about. Being nice to each other. Being kind to each other. Revealing the wisdom that God planted inside of you. And sharing and giving it out to the world. That everyone will enjoy from your wisdom. The wisdom that God gave you is not yours. It was that you received from Him to share. That's why you have family. That's why you have friends. So when your wife is asking you what you were learning today, don't start quoting the righteous people and tell her, Oh, I learned the tw page 24, Masachet Beit Sain, the Talmud. She doesn't care about that. She wants to hear that you are more honest today when you came back from the Beit Midrash. That this evening you're going to be a little bit nicer than you were yesterday. That you will be able to apologize on the mistake, on the fact that you were a little bit rude yesterday night. While saying and pushing and trying, relax. She wants you to be a human being. She wants you to be decent. That's why she's asking. And it's not that she doesn't care if you learned the second or the 24th page in Masechet Beit Just that the main thing that she cares about is your friendship. And you need to understand that your friendship is really more important than which page you were learning in Masechet Beit Because all the purpose of you sitting and learning Talmud is to make you a better person to your wife, to your children, to your friends, to your community, to the world. Not that you're going to drown in the imagination of the biblical Talmud. It can be like worshipping idols. If you don't have the intention of fixing yourself and being like God wants you to be, you misinterpret the whole intention of giving you the Torah from Mount Sinai. You're in the wrong opposite direction from the purpose of God while giving you the Torah from Mount Sinai. Why? Because every time that you sit and learn Torah, you should learn Torah with that intention that you are now receiving the wisdom of God. And what God told us, when God spoke to us, He said two things. When God revealed His godliness to His nation in that amazing great day of, of, of us, standing in front of Him as one person with one heart. In that day, He said only two things. And we heard His voice speaking to us from the fire. First of all, the Torah is telling us, how did we achieve that level to be able that God will speak to us face to face? Because we were standing over <laughs> there as one person with one heart. We were united. United means we loved each other, we respected each other, we gave a place, a space for our friends to stand with us. It was okay for me that my friend was standing by my side. I was happy that my friend was with me in that place. In that place. Oh, but it was my place. No, I'm happy that you have my place. 
I'm gonna move. And if it's not, oh, it was your place, okay, I'm gonna move here. Oh, it was your place, no problem. I'm gonna walk till that place that no one will be bothered by me. And in that place, I will feel that I achieved my purpose. I'm with them. I'm the last one. Yes, but I'm with them. I'm backing you up, guys. Don't worry. I'm with you. Let's hear the voice of Hashem. Now you're qualified to hear words of Hashem. When you're one with your people, you're able to hear and to understand the message of the Creator to you. Now, great. After that, you've been qualified by having love and good intentions and good will. Now you can hear two things from Hashem. First of all, Hashem is saying, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I'm your God. What does it mean, I'm your God? That Hashem is revealing to us His, His nature, His character, His will, His intention. By saying, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I'm your God. He's telling you, I love you. Because the real deepest meaning of the name of Hashem is mercy, is kindness. So Hashem is telling you, listen, me, I am the creator, the boss, the king. I love you. I'm kind. I have patience. I love you. I'm going to wait for you forever. First thing that Hashem said to us. Second thing that He said, Lo yelecha elokim acherim al panay. Don't Replace me, please. Don't leave me. I love you. Don't walk away. Those are the only things that we heard from Hashem. Don't go worship idols. Doesn't mean don't go because I'm going to kill you. I'm going to burn you in hell. No, 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 no. He said, listen, I love you. Don't go. Don't walk away. That's it. That's the story. That's the whole story. Please, I just revealed my love to you. Don't replace me. That's the voice. That's the voice of heaven. That's the voice of Hashem. That's the voice of the Torah. That's the voice of truth. That's what we need to hear 24-7. I love you. Don't walk away. Now, you want to represent Hashem? So, love and chase after people that they won't walk away. That's it. That's the whole story. Just be nice and loving and kind and show love and show respect and show the godliness that's been planted inside of you in your creation. Be who that God made you to be. And if you have lackings, try to understand why. Try to understand why God dressed you with a certain outfit. What that outfit is used for. What you can use your life experience for. If you have certain nature, certain stories, certain knowledge, you can use that knowledge <clears throat> to save lives of other people. To reveal to those people that they still have a chance. That they can also come back to Hashem. People with the similar background. People that are coming from similar places with the same life stories or with stories that can relate to your life story and you need to go with who that you are with who that God made you and to be proud of yourself and to be happy with your share and to know that you are a creation of the Creator of King of all Kings of the Almighty of the one that is able to create the world, that take care of every creation, of every animal, of every bird, of every porcupine and a squirrel, and he takes care of every butterfly and every animal, and he feeds them, and he finds for them a place to sleep at night, and he cares about their babies, and when they're crying, he wakes up their mothers to go and take care of them, and he uses your senses, and your emotions, and your thoughts, and your feelings to wake you up, to wake us up, he controls the creation and He designed you to be exactly who that you are. So take it. Just take it. 
And don't follow the voice of the snake that makes you feel bad with who that you are. And makes you think that you can become someone else. You cannot. It's the only thing that is impossible for you to do is to be someone else. Impossible. You're never going to make it. You want to be better? You want to reveal your love, your qualities? Be yourself. Talk about what did you feel. Do what did you believe that you should do. Be proud of yourself. Be who that you are. Express the Creator's light in the world while creating you. Understand that you are light. That you are the creation. That you are a handmaid of the Creator. And express His godliness by being truthful to who that He made you to be. Your children doesn't want a different father. They want their father. So be their father. Be their mother, be her husband, be his wife, be his friend, be his partner. Be who that they chose you to be, who that you are. Be honest, be loyal, be your true self, express your true self. That's the will of Hashem. Because He made you to be who that you are. And that's the only thing that you can do. To be who that you are. You can or be who that you are. Or run away from it. That's it. So don't run away. Be who that you are. And then the light of the Creator will shine from you. And people that will look at you, they will not going to see you. They're going to see the light of Hashem. They're going to decide to learn from you how to be themselves. And they won't chase after you to imitate you. They will just feel connection to the wisdom that is flowing out of your mouth, that is coming out of your heart, out of your eyes. And they will learn from you how to connect themselves to their spiritual source through real actions. By being honest, by being their themselves, their true selves, that's what we need to do. Just to be honest, just to be simple. And the light of Hashem will complete the mission. And the blessing of Hashem will wash the world. And the water of His wisdom will come out and fix and purify and heal and build and support and make wonders in the world. As long as you're denying your creation, who that God made you to be, and you're afraid to be who that you really are, you're denying from your point all of the creation. You're denying Hashem's existence by denying His creation that it's you. Mainly for you, it's you. Mainly for me, it's me. So first of all, I need to stop, block the light of Hashem, that inner noise, that inner flood, that inner wisdom, those inner thoughts that are bombarding my mind 24-7. Do this, do that, think about that, think about that, move there, move there, do this, call that. What's going on? Who am I? Inside all of that noise, with all of those storms all around us, what is the purpose of my life? Who am I supposed to be? And not to be afraid of your beloved ones. Not to be afraid of the people that are surrounding you. You need to be a nice person to your family, not because you're afraid that they're going to lock you. Because you should find the good points in them means their real connection to the Creator. You need to recognize their godliness, their inner connection to Hashem. But you're not able to do that until you fix those things inside of yourself. Before you recognize how godly and beautiful and awesome, fantastic, great you are, you cannot see it on others. Only after you're going to love yourself. Only then you can love your friend. You cannot love your friend as long as you hate yourself. No way. It's not going to work. As long as you hate yourself, it means that you misinterpret the intention of the Creator. And you're going to say, but I'm a sinner, but I'm lousy, but I'm doing horrible things. I hear you. I'm also failing on daily basis. 
My wife will testify on that. My children will testify on that. And I also promise to you, I'm not going to lie to you, so my testimony is strong and solid enough. But I know that God gave me something. It calls tshuva. Tshuva, it's a way to come back. So now I can use it and I can drop it. To come back to Hashem, it's not to put fill in. To come back to Hashem, it's not to keep Shabbat. To keep Shabbat, it's to keep Shabbat. To put fill in, it's to put fill in. To do tshuva, it's to come back to Hashem. It's a different mitzvah, it's a different obligation. How you do tshuva? The Rambam is saying, you don't need Rabbi Nachman of Breslev for that. You don't need to be a Breslev and Hasid to do tshuva. You have Shulchan Aruch. You can learn it from the Shulchan Aruch, from the Jewish halacha, Jewish rules. There is a way to do tshuva. How you do tshuva? You need to recognize your mistake and then you need to go and tell it to Hashem and to apologize and to regret and to express your sorrow from making that mistake and apologizing and sharing with Hashem your thoughts on your hopes of changing your ways and become a better person and that's where you finish your tshuva process. Now after you did tshuva and you really said to Hashem, oh I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, I didn't mean to do that, or you know what, even worse, I did. I was so mean in that place, I wanted him to suffer so much and on that I'm apologizing, that's where you finish. And then you don't need to go back to that place anymore. If you hurt a person, you should go and apologize to him as well. You should fix as much as you can. But after that you did from your side, the maximum that you can do, that's where you need to forgive yourself because God, that He's a little bit wiser than us, He forgave us already. So if He found a way to forgive you after you did tshuva, why can't you forgive yourself? Because you let your yetzer hara, your evil inclination, play in your mind words and songs of sadness and despair. You're not worthy. That's not a strong tshuva enough. You need to do more than that. You're never going to fix it. Lies. Lies. Negative thoughts are thoughts of the evil inclination are thoughts of lies, Lashon Ara. God said that I can come back to Him if I'm going to confess. After I finished confessing, I came back already. I'm with Him. Sorry, don't listen to your sad songs anymore. Sorry, don't want to. I'm with Hashem now. You need to believe that Hashem is merciful enough to forgive you. And if you don't, so you don't understand Hashem. Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I love you. Don't walk away. Don't follow the voice of the evil inclination. Listen to my voice. My voice is telling you, I love you. I love you. I care about you. You're my child. I want you to succeed. Oh, so why is he piling so many difficulties? Until we will be humble. Until we will connect ourselves to him on, 20, on, on daily basis, 24 hours a day. When our faith, our will will be perfect, we're going to see wonders that the people that went out of Egypt didn't saw, didn't experience. We're going to see miracles that will be greater than opening the Red Sea to 12 lanes. We're going to see miracles that will be greater than to see fruits coming out of walls of water. We're going to see miracles greater than um, clouds of honor that are walking and opening the path for us. More than flying on the wings of eagles. We're going to see wonders. That the wonders of, of, of coming out of Egypt would be tiny compared to the wonders that we're going to see. Do you believe that? I do. That's my job, so I'm trying to do my job. As a believer, that's my job. My job is to believe in Hashem. What is Hashem? Who is Hashem? In Hashem's greatness, in Hashem's kindness. So I believe. So I'm working on my faith to believe, to trust, to try, to understand that He's got an endless love for me, means that I have thousands and thousands, endless numbers of opportunities to give myself another chance, and another chance, and another chance, and even thousands of times in one day. Like the Rabbi Nachman of Wesley testified on himself, that he was restarting his tshuva, a righteous man and doing tshuva. Yes. 
Because that's the will of heaven. That we will come back to Him. And when we will come back to Him, He will come back to us. That's the story. Because we didn't listen to Him when He said, I love you, don't walk away. We walked away. And now we need to come back. That's it. So just make a comeback. A big, nice, fancy comeback. And that's it. Thank you very much. Hazak Baruch. Hashem bless you all. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all Him. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.